<laughs> now it's just you and me, baby. <laughs> Rob Pinkston. Good to see you. Thanks for coming. <laughs> this is this shit's real now, Dude. Rob. I can ask you anything. What do, you want, what do you want to ask? Yeah. What has the impact of Ned's been on your life? Yeah, I'll never not be Coconut Head. I'll never <laughs> not be connected to the show. Yeah. Honestly, it's like like my favorite thing I've ever done. The Ned's podcast is fun, yeah. but we're like, hey, remember when? You know, like, and yeah. like everybody's like, yeah. You know, this is more fun because we get to really talk about real yeah. things. Shyness is a big thing for me. I'm a very extroverted, shy person. Has shyness held you back in life? Definitely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think for me, it's my biggest hill to conquer. Hey, growers, welcome back to the pod. The merch store is now live, growingupstore.com. Go get your tasty merch while it's there. There's a really cute one with a sweet little nugget picture of me. You can wear baby me on a sweatshirt or a shirt. <laughs> uh, I've been loving seeing the responses it, to it all so far. So get your merch while you can, growingupstore.com. Thanks for being here. Hope your week is amazing. Today on the pod, I have uh, my old friend and probably the most iconic Ned's Declassified character, the number one requested Ned's Declassified character, the coconut head, Mr. Rob Pinkston. Um, old friend of mine, we spent a lot of life as kids together and now we get to connect as adults. He's working in video games, he DJs and makes EDM music. He's married. We talk about uh, relationships. We talk about his struggles with shyness. We talk about uh, the impact of Ned's on his life. Uh, and we talk about rave culture and EDM culture that uh, Rob is very big into and that I understand because it's a beautiful thing. So uh, enjoy my conversation today with the Coco, Rob Pinkston. All right. Yeah, and now it's just you and me, baby. <laughs> um, Rob Pinkston. Hi. Hey, man. Hey, bud. Good to see you. <laughs> Good to see you. Thanks it, for coming. It's funny. We're saying hey, bud, but we already said hey, bud. We like did. We did. But, but, now, we're but saying now we're saying hey, bud. On record. Yes, this is true. This is legally binding. <laughs> this, is re this shit's real now, Dude, Rob. It actually happened. I can ask you anything. Oh, man. What do you want to ask me? Um... Let's start with, man, it has been, Ned's was such a big experience in all of our lives, mm. right? And then it kind of had this afterglow of, you know, still feeding into my life, I, I, I know. Um, and then there was for sure a period where it felt, of course, there's still people who love it and come up to me and I'm sure come up to you, like all of that, but it felt very far away from my life because... It had been many years since Are we you had done like it. Today? Well, no, I'm saying like a couple years ago. Okay. You know, Ned's felt like real distant, even though it's still there and people are still right. referencing it. But it felt not close to me anymore. You know, it felt like far off. Yeah. And now that I'm doing the Ned's pod and seeing Daniel and Lindsay all the time, like, it's back <laughs> in Dude. my life. And in it's crazy in a, a big way. way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was funny going over there because we did the that pod maybe like a month ago at this point. Yep. And it was just so interesting because I hadn't seen them in so long. Yep. And so I was basically seeing them like the moment we started rolling. Yes. For the first time in years. Yes. I mean, I haven't seen you in a, quite a long time either. Yeah. But like, you know, we definitely kept in touch more than I had with Lindsay or Devin. So it was for sure extra like, whoa, this is all happening right now. This is a flashback. <laughs> yeah. 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 People loved if you haven't heard it yet, the Rob episode of the Ned's pod, people <laughs> loved it. I, uh, I don't even remember what I said. <laughs> yeah, I, I black out every pod. Yeah. It's fine. Um, but people loved it. Uh, I loved seeing you. It was so fun to hang out again. And it's been such a trip kind of like entering back into <clears throat> this feeling with Daniel and Lindsay and seeing you. We've had a couple yeah. other guests on reconnecting with like Kyle. Like it's been... So strange. So I, I, I guess I wanted to ask you, like, yeah. what has the impact of Ned's been on your life? I mean, it's funny because it happened for you. I, I forget how old you were when you started it. Was it was 12 when 12. I started, yeah. Well, that's is that the pilot? That was the pilot. And yeah, then a so year 13. later, the show. Yeah, 13, okay, so 13 was the show. 
I booked it when I was 16. Yep. So I was a little older, a little bit kind of past the like, this is the formative thing, because I was already kind of in high school and yeah. becoming a guy. Yeah. But at the same time, it kind of was like a formative thing in my life. Yeah. So it's interesting. Like, I'll never not be Coconut Head. I'll never <laughs> not be connected to the show. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I don't know. I mean, I honestly, it's like like my favorite thing I've ever done. <laughs> yeah. And it was so fun. Yeah. Um, we got so lucky. And like everything about the production of that show was like such a home run. Yep. That it's like so magical that we got to even be there for that. Yeah. Because like everybody was great with each other. Yeah. There's always good vibes. Like all those, I mean, now we're especially seeing it. Like all those other Nick shows were having like some pretty dark stuff happening, For you know, real. and like not only behind the scenes, but like between the cast and crew and like all that stuff. Yeah. We never got any of that. So like it was this like just perfect thing. And yeah, it's it's cool that like when you know, when you're recording on a camera, like everything that's in front of the camera is there permanently. And, yeah. And every and people are people. So like we can tell, you know, we look at another person. We could tell if like, are they genuine? Yeah. And when we were doing those scenes, we loved each other yeah. and we were having such a fun time that that show just like sings. There's yeah. something about every moment in the show. And we got to give that to people. And now kids have kind of like, you know, there were kids that were your age growing up with that. I was kind of past it. So I wasn't connecting in the same way. I didn't right. watch the show. It wasn't my audience. For yeah, me. you were like 16, 17, 18 on the show. So I was kind of watching MTV and audience. stuff. After, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I was a little that. So. When kids come up to me and they're like, that was like what I grew up with. I grew up with you. Yeah. You know, and it's like, it's great that we got to give them a positive thing that they kind of genuinely connected to. And Definitely. yeah, it's, it's really awesome. Like, I'm so proud to be a part of that. Yeah, same. Yeah, we had Scott and Michelle Fellows on Ned's Pod recently. And oh, I was there that day, actually. I yeah, saw yeah, them yeah. right after we wrapped ours. Yeah. Yeah, that just, that finally aired. And like Scott was saying, you know, he, and it was the right instinct. He had the instinct, like, if we're having fun truly on set and everyone's, like, yeah. feeling good, it's going to translate through the camera. Yeah. And, like, it really did. That's the most common thing that people say is, like, dude, you, like, were my childhood. And, like, you you raised me. Well, and credit, like, I love to, you. credit to Scott and, and Michelle for, like, finding people that were perfect at being that thing, yes. right? Like, yes. you were perfect for Ned. Yes. You know, Daniel was perfect for Cookie. Yes. Lindsay was perfect for Moe's. Yes. I mean, everybody just, like, nailed it, and it, it that's a credit to them selecting that. You yeah, know? and you were Coconut Head. I told you the whole casting thing, right? Yeah, <laughs> that it was supposed to be, like, a one-off thing. Well, too, not only that, right? Yeah. Like, so, I, I might as well say it. Yeah, yeah. So, like, uh, I, you know... I was struggling as an actor, doing like short films and stuff. Get the audition for this role in a Nickelodeon show. I've always wanted to be on Nickelodeon. I grew up loving it. I was like so excited. I'm nervous. Uh, I go to a coach to get ready for the audition. It's literally one line. I think. I, th I think all I did was scream in one scene, and then yeah. there was another scene <laughs> that they wrote for the. the it must have got cut or something. Right. But it was part of the audition and never made the show. It was the scene where like I'm trying to get a date or something. Um, but it was a short scene. Yeah. So I, I get coached on the role, and, and the first scene is just reacting to the, like, hey, he's Coconut Head, and then they chase me, and so I have to do the scream thing. Um, and when I was getting coached, I was so nervous, and my coach, again, you know, people can see, can read each other. They, she could tell. I was, she's like, you're, like, you know, shaking. I mean, I'm a little nervous right now. I'm a little, like, <laughs> yeah. you know. Yeah. So uh, she, she was like, you need to, like, just do something or, like, rock your system. Just fucking scream. And so she's like, scream with me right now. Just scream at me, like, as loud as you can. So, you know. Ah! Sorry. Away yeah, from yeah. the mic. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and I just go nuts. She's like, I want you to do that right before you go in. I was like, perfect. So I get to the room. I'm waiting outside of the audition, and there's all these kids. Oh, part of the, part of the role was that they were going to shave your head kind of like this, like short like a coconut's fur. So they were like, you got to be willing to cut your hair. And I had longer hair. Yep. So I was like, I'm willing to do it. I'll die for this role. You know? <laughs> So <laughs> I'm waiting outside the audition, and there's all these kids, and they're, like, just hamming it up. They, this kid's got, like, a coconut on top of his head, like a half bra or coconut thing. Goodness. You know, it's, like, that kind of stuff. They're, like, really going for it. And yeah. I'm like, man, I'm out of my league. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I'm like, hey, I'm not cut out for this. I'm not that serious. Yeah, I dude, this, guy's, this guy's got it. This guy's good. <laughs> um, so I, I'm, like, just looking at him the whole time. I literally was, like, focused on somebody else, not paying attention. Yeah. So nervous. I go in the room, it's Harriet, just this tiny woman, you know, mm -hmm. and she's like, all right, you're reading for the role. It's just her and I. Yep. Doors closed. I forget to do the scream thing, so I'm like, I'm going to do it right now. 
So I just do it the moment I walk in. So like, it's quiet. She's like writing on a piece of paper and I just go, ah! like right at her face. <laughs> Because I'm just like lost in my mind thinking like, <laughs> I need to be ready. I, uh, uh, uh. So I just scream at her alone in this room. And she's just like, and then I just start reading the, this page. I'm like, uh, the, uh, uh, and then do the scene. <laughs> and she's just like stunned the whole time. She's like, I'm sure. She, <laughs> doesn't, I'm sure she is. doesn't say anything. And she's just like, okay, thank you. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> I fucking ruined that. The coconut head guy got it. Ah! And Why did I yell at her? Yeah. So but that got you the role. Yeah, the coconut head scream is is part of yeah. I guess the I character. somehow dude. like tapped into something. You summoned in the yeah. <laughs> you summoned the future you, dude. Yeah. He, uh, he jumped back like the Flash in the what was it? The Batman? Th- no, no. I'm, I'm a nerd. <laughs> Don't you nerd out on me? Sorry, bud, sorry. it's happening again. <laughs> it's happening. Uh, um, that's uh, that's hilarious. That's definitely like a no no in auditions. Is um, you probably scream, scream at the casting director <laughs> like unprompted, just scream. <laughs> Don't traumatize somebody who's you know. But maybe to it got you the role, man. Maybe. Um, what what was it like? Like get, you got off the show at like eighteen. Yeah. Having played like Coconut Head, which is such a specifically <laughs> iconic character. Yeah. Was it strange? You went to college and stuff. Like, was it strange getting off the show, having Coconut Head as your um, uh, as your being? <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, I feel like if anything, I've always felt it was strange because I was insecure mm. more than it was strange because it was strange. Yeah, if that makes sense. Yep. Like, whatever it, it, feelings I had were probably more coming out of me than it was like the situation. Yeah. If anything, I feel like people didn't even really. Like I'd say from like in the casting world yeah. and the, the the industry of, yeah. of acting, they were just looking at like Nickelodeon, how many episodes? Like that's all they cared about. Yeah, whatever the True. role was, I don't think they really like typecast me or anything like yeah. that. Um, I mean, I wore a wig, so like I literally looked different. Right, um, as soon as you popped it off. Yeah, yeah. so it kind of helps to be honest. Like, yeah. If if you're gonna be like Screech, yeah, <laughs> you know, like it's cool that you can like take off the Screech hat and not be Screech, you know, for sure. Yeah, like yeah. I feel for uh, whatever his name is, Dustin, yeah, Dustin Diamond. Diamond. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like he's kind of gonna be that forever, or like uh, right. Urkel, or you know, like something like that. Right. I guess he can kind of do it, but no, I know what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. I I had this thing of like you know we, I talk about like getting the reboot a lot. There was a time where like I really wanted it. Now I don't I don't even know, but. I, I feel like if we did a reboot, I do have a fear that I would then be Ned truly forever. I'm already oh, Ned forever, yeah. but it was it was kid me, so I've taken off at least kid me. You know? Yeah, yeah. Even though I still sound and, and look very much the same. I'm going to be honest. I like this arc. This arc you're on right now? Yeah. <laughs> digging it. <laughs> Thanks. Approved. Yeah. Thanks, dude. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. dude. Uh, I, I, yeah, but it's, I, you know, you will always be that guy, but yeah. I feel like even if you were to do something, it would be how it's approached. Because, yes. like, yes. If, it's, if it's, like, a sarcastic version of what a future you would look like, yeah. I think that would actually be kind of endearing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's not the exact same show. Right. With older people. Right. I, no, I it, think it that would be, be a whole cool. new kind of thing. And yes. I don't so think we'll people see. would necessarily see you as, like, yeah, they would see you as Ned, but it wouldn't be... The, like the idea of Ned changes. That's true. You know? It would be now adult, adult Ned. Well, it'd be more nuanced, and like yeah. I think it'd be a bit more you it in would that. Be. Like, yeah, because Ned was always you, very you. Yeah, but it was a cartoon of you. Exactly. Whereas this version, I think, would be probably a bit more. Yeah. Like your actual self. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it goes, man. But I don't think you really need to do it, to be honest, man. Like. I feel That's like you are so know. cool. Like hey. I like hanging out with you. Hey. You know, like Stop I don't need it. to necessarily go to Ned for that. Yeah. You know. Yeah, that's what's been cool about <clears throat> this podcast, the Ned's Pod, is getting to actually bring like myself to the world and not kind of an abstracted version. I feel like um, that's kind of an interesting thing that I really love about just the generational growth of just society. Yeah. Is like in the nineties and stuff, I feel like, you know, when I was growing up in the nineties, it was like Everything felt very like sanitized in the way I perceived the world. Like it, it just things felt like they were rigid and that they were kind of how they had to be, and I had to conform to that. And yeah. I feel like the world, especially newer generations, millennials, Gen Z, have really like changed that narrative where it's like, no, I'm going to define the world, and like <clears throat> I'll be the person that you know steps into that position of power. Like you are, you have a voice to 
a large audience, and yeah. you get to be an honest individual. Yeah. And that inspires people like, wait, I, that's what I'm looking toward. Yeah. You know? So I think it's really cool. Yeah, thanks, man. And I, and I really kind of like internally slow clap for like all the people younger than me where I'm like, damn. You guys are doing it. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing it. <laughs> yep. yeah. yeah, it's cool. Yeah, yeah. thanks, man. <laughs> yeah, it's been a it's been a fun, strange ride for sure. And I mean, we all have. How like, do you? How do you? You you seem like you're. Uh, I guess like you have a complex kind of balance of things you're thinking about with this. Yeah. With this topic. Yeah, I mean, always, always. It's it's strange having something so major and public in the past mm. that provides me so much goodness in my life but is still this okay so here's an interesting thing yeah. i've been thinking about because we were talking just before the camera started rolling and just like i was i mentioned like i love to like reflect on how i'm feeling or thinking about things yeah. like at any given moment yeah and one of the things i was really thinking about was like i feel very rigid in pe who i feel i am perceived as and i have to maintain mm rather than like I can really do anything and like mm. go anywhere, do challenge any sort yeah. of thing I used to be. Yeah. And I feel like um, in my creative endeavors, I tend to like feel like I'm like, for example, with my music, with Pinky. Yeah. I've made a few songs. I have mixed feelings about them personally because I made them. I sat there with them forever and like I don't feel like they're finished and they're out. And so I have this like, you know, feelings about them. But sure. other people have heard the songs and now that's the idea of Pinky. Right. So now when I make more songs, I'm thinking about, like, how do I match what they believe Pinky oh. is rather than what I want it to be? Yeah. And that's such a weird place to be in. Yeah. But you kind of feel like you get locked in there yeah. when you start to do things. Yeah. Uh, I think that's something I have really tried to break out of just, I mean, this, this is about identity. Like, mm. identity and, yeah, how you approach your expression. Uh, it's something I've tried to break out from because that definitely feels like that is how child acting goes dude like yes. like that is it yeah is, man. is you are basing what you're doing off what do they want me to be what do they think of me as what do i think they need from me right like it mm -hmm. is external to internal um and that's how you're getting validated. That's giving it you. It is a weird thing, child mm -hmm. acting. Because mm -hmm. you're so f moldable as it, a kid. Exactly. Yeah. You don't have enough identity to build off of yeah. as a kid. So you have, like, you are forming it based on other people's perception. Um, as I've gone through, like, my 20s, I guess, like, that has been something I've tried to release. And actually, but, but it still gets in there for sure. Um, but music, that's one of them that I'm, I actually have like a new project that I'm working on and a big part of it has been, how do I really get into the music that I want to make? Totally. Like, how do I not make it about this? Yeah. What anyone perceives me as or, or the music I've made before. Like I'm going on kind of like a whole different track. I've made music for a long time, but I'm like, even my own ideas of what my music is. What if I just paused all of that and decided something brand new. Um, yeah, I've, I've been feeling that way a, a lot, with, yeah. especially in the music world, because yeah. it's easy to just start a new project and make a new song, right? So yeah. like, I make a lot of songs, and, and I'll just... For me, I wanted to be good at quickly making a song, because I felt like the technical is what impedes the creative process. Yes. Like, if I'm having to figure out where to click, I'm not thinking creatively. Yeah, I'm yeah. Not you're losing the flow of making Yeah, so like, yeah. I wanted to be good at doing it quickly. So I started making a lot of songs, and now I feel like I'm so good at doing it quickly that I want to put on that other hat and like yeah. try a different thing. Yeah. And it'd be easy to do quickly, and I know I could do it, but I'm afraid to even step into it, because... But who cares, right? I'm sitting yourself, in front of my computer. You gotta set yourself free, man. Who yeah. fucking cares? That's also the beauty of right now, I find, with art, media, just self-expression. Like, everything's moving so fast anyways. Yeah. Nothing sticks. It doesn't matter. Whatever idea you think people have of you, they're receiving so much information. They're consuming so much yeah. about other things. Nothing sticks. Everything is malleable now. Like, Pinky could be 12 different things at this point. It is interesting. Yeah. I, I've been listening to a couple albums. Um, I forget the names of the artists, but a buddy of mine was sharing me some music, and he shared me this one album that was so, like, 
kind of schizophrenic. It was yeah. like all over the place. Yeah. Like it would start here and then it'd end up here. And like yeah. in the same song, you'd go like five different places. Yeah. And on a production level, it was just like ear candy. Yeah. You know, everything was changing. And it, yeah. it was so cool to like take that idea of like anything can be anything. Dude, and you can put it do, all in one. Yep. You can do anything. I listen to this uh, Saya Gray record. It's the most schizophrenic, but like cool yeah. shit I've ever heard. Yeah. People, yeah, you can go real out there. Yeah. And you won't even be the most out there. So <laughs> no, I hope you no. set yourself free, man. Yeah, no, um, I think that's interesting. Yeah. It's, it's a constant kind of process. I don't feel like anybody ever really gets there, and anybody who says they've gotten there it, is lying. It, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, people might not know that you uh, make EDM music. Yes. Yes. Why, when, why EDM? When did EDM hit you right in the heart? Uh, I used to be in the back of my mom's car in my car seat, and my mom had this tape called 90s Rave Anthems, <laughs> and she would just bump that shit. What? Yeah, also when I was a little kid, I used to drink iced coffee for some reason. I was, like, really into iced coffee. What? So I'd just be, like, jacked on iced coffee in the back, just like... Raving. How old were you drinking iced coffee? <laughs> like, as, a, like, a kid, like, in, like, a like a uh, high chair or whatever, you know? Dude, I love iced coffee, yeah. Like, you know... Like, milk, a lot iced coffee, and, like, mm. Excuse mm. me, dude. I mean, I don't want to say. I mean, no, no. Look, I understand the whole like stunt your growth. Yeah, thing. I don't want to. I was and I was a short kid. I, I know. Say, I know. I don't want to correlate it. No, but no. You were like the sh littlest boy on set, but you were older than all of <laughs> yeah, us. Yeah. No. Maybe because you were drinking coffee I, since you I were a toddler. I thought about that, but I am like a carbon copy of my dad, like physically. Okay. And he was the same way. Like, but did the, the he year also I had drink the coffee spurt? as a toddler? No, no. Okay, okay. No, his dad was in the military. They lived in, like, Germany, like, traveling all over the okay. place. Like, he's, like, a very, like, rigid individual. Okay. Like, it's not, let's ha let our son drink coffee all day. All right. Like, so not that my parents are, like, crazy and let me drink coffee. Yeah. I just enjoyed it, and I was a very, like, mature kid. So I was like, can I please have some coffee? And, <laughs> can I, can I and then listen to and, 90s um, rave could anthems. You, could you bump up the rave jams to 10, mother? Uh, could you EQ the bass up a little higher, please? Thank you. <laughs> um, so holy shit. All right. So you were raving and caffeinated, uh, as a, as a wee child. Yeah. So it was a cycle you returned to. So yeah. So I never, life. I never really left it. Um, mm. I was always into EDM music. Mm. Um, I have a lot of funny rave memories. Um, a lot I don't remember and a lot I do remember. <laughs> but, what was uh, your first rave? Uh, my first rave was Nocturnal Wonderland in, and it was, I was late to the rave game. I always wanted to get into raving yeah. and then I just, was always too shy. Yep. Shyness is a big thing for me. In my I life. know. Yeah. Which is That's so funny that you know that. Cause, yeah. Because I've never really talked about it, but I just like know I like it that. of you. But that's so interesting because yeah. like, ah, people, people wouldn't get that shyness can look the way it does with you. I know it's a thing with you. I'm a very extroverted shy person. Exactly. Yes. You're a very yeah. funny, personable. You can yeah. kind of like command a room, even though I know you feel shy, and I yes. know you'll like retreat. Yeah, and I'm trying to be better recently about, like, just in general, just being honest, Yeah, I think is a, is a big thing. Not to divert from what we were just no, no, talking no. about. No, 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 it's all good. But, uh, yeah, I think that um, I want to be more vocal about it because I feel like, you know, with a platform like this, like, it's great that we get to talk about, like, real stuff. Yeah. Like, the Ned's podcast is fun, yeah. but we're like, hey, remember when? You know, like, and like, everybody's <laughs> like, yeah. You know, this is more fun because we get to really talk about real yeah, things. Yeah, life. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I want to be able to, like, talk about that with people. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. Has shyness held you back in life? Definitely. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I think for me, it's my biggest hill to conquer. Did raving and like EDM and um, kind of that world help with that? For sure. I think for for me, the most profound thing that I found through that community was that when I was going to, to kind of rewind it a little bit, when I was on the show, I was in high school. Yeah. And I was two years out of four years of high school through. Um, so the last two years, I was like majority of my time on set during the school year. Yeah. And I basically kind of disappeared from high school. Right. And I didn't really like high school anyways. I was bullied and I was little. And yeah, like, you were so I, little I was like, <laughs> for high school, dude. It's yeah. not fair. <laughs> yeah. It's not fair. So like I, I just like kind of gained a little bit of resentment toward like everyone. Yeah. So I had these like preconceived notions about other people that I'd never met really. Yeah. And I was kind of harboring that as like the truth. So then mm -hmm. when I went into like a rave environment and like, granted, there's a lot of 
help happening to get people friendly with each other. <laughs> but man, that <laughs> shit is awesome. And like it fucking it like it works. <laughs> man, love is the truth. And yeah. like it's so frustrating that people shield themselves from that. Yeah. You know? And they they begin to believe that that's the real world. And yeah. so like you go to a space like that. Sorry to, to No. But you go to a space like that and literally everyone is like your your closest friend and they're talking to you for the first time. Yeah. And like I know there's a little bit of artificiality happening there, but I think it's only a a, a jump starter for what's already in people. You know? Yeah, agreed. They, they they're afraid to be sensitive with each other. Yeah. So then they take whatever they take. Yeah. And then they become a little bit more open to sensitivity, and then their natural sensitivity shines. So like it was really so profound for me. Yeah. To realize that like wait people are awesome. Like, yeah. People are so cool and like. <clears throat> I'll meet so many crazy people from crazy walks of life that are, you know, all over the planet yeah. um, at, at these things. And it's like for a shared love of, you know, rumbling vibrations in your chest, you yeah. know, it's awesome. Yep. And like flowing and having a good time. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's why I asked because I, I definitely experienced enough of that. I mean, I'm pretty extroverted, but I like everyone has social anxiety things at times yeah. and or how do I feel about myself in spaces with strangers and, you know, how do I feel about people in general? Like you mm. said, you got a little jaded. And, yeah, I was curious about your rave experience because, like, Coachella even for me, like, back in the day. We went to Coachella together. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dude, I, just side note. <laughs> yeah. I will never, never get over the fact that we left the day before Daft, Daft Punk, Punk played. I know. And they did the pyramid set. I know. And we could have been there. I know, and but I didn't And then Teo showed like, us know. videos of it. Yeah. Two days later. Yeah, ah! I didn't even like know at the time. I didn't even really know. You know, I, was, I will never oh, get over 15. that. I was 15. Just oh. yeah, it's sad. Sorry. Yeah, I'm Rob and I went to Coachella to see uh, Coheed and Cambria, <laughs> right next to the Madonna tent. Remember, yeah. they, were, they were like, "Hey, Madonna!" Yeah, uh, like on the mics. And that then the so next funny. year, I went to see Rage. And then the next year, so those those years, I went one day. Mm -hmm. And then the next year was my first time going for the three day festival. Yeah, and, like, yeah. With friends in an RV you know, maybe took some things. And uh, and it, it really was a life-changing experience in the way that you described, where it coming back from that experience, I was changed. Like, now I was more sensitive. Now I felt more mm. hope for the world, for people. Yeah. Because when you... People can give you reasons to feel guarded. People can oh, give yeah. you reasons to feel shy. Experiences can make you feel defensive and that those defenses might might stay like stuck on but then you go to an event like Coachella or a rave and 80,000 people are there like smiling and frolicking yeah. and having a good time and listening to great music and like you bump into someone and it's nothing but love like oh sorry bud like it's beautiful it it it's it funny opens because my heart man there it's not even just like an environment like a rave or something where yeah. you can find that like i used to go to a lot of heavy metal shows yeah i was like super into that yeah. um obviously we're talking about like code and camera yeah. and stuff but like even crazier stuff yeah yeah um and i remember this one time i was in <laughs> there there's such like a camaraderie of the mosh pit yeah it's like this weird like let's violent beat each other love up. Yeah, yeah like but i like, love you it's bro. like i'm gonna punch you in the face and like you're we're cool about this right like and then you go and you do it and then they're like thank you you know and it's God, like i love you brother yeah yeah it's weird they like hug it out and stuff like so like i remember i was uh in this giant mosh pit and like when they get really big they turn into like a herd where yeah. they just start moving in one direction yeah and i had tripped and i like face planted and i was like i literally like in the moment was like i'm about to get trampled i'm about to get trampled this is a very scary moment and this dude grabs me by the scruff of the neck, picks me up off my feet and like plops me back on in motion. And I look over and it's like this like huge dude. He's like gotta be like 300 pounds. And he's got this Viking helmet on with one horn, the other one broke off and he's all sweaty. <laughs> he just looks at me, he's like, you're good brother. And I'm like, yes I am, you rule. Like, this is awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. fuck yeah. There's just, yeah. Yeah, there's beauty in that, mm -hmm. man. There's such beauty in it. Those little things definitely like, helped me come to a place of like faith in humanity restored. <clears throat> yeah, I feel like if people are shy, like what's cool about a big crowd like that is you're still anonymous. Yeah. You know, like if people are shy, like a 10 person room is gonna be scarier than actually a massive concert of like a couple thousand or whatever. Yeah. Like 
Yeah, yeah. There's a weird intimacy and anonymity to it. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I don't know. If people are shy or have social anxiety, maybe just go to a rave. Or a mosh pit. I mean, <laughs> go go punch strangers. Go punch a stranger or like <laughs> yeah. boogie to four on the floor bass oh, man. for two days straight. House music is the truth. People who don't get it, just they really don't get it. I and know. It's, it, once, once you get it, man, it's, it's a new place. Like, I, I feel it, man. Yeah. That's why I thought it was so cool seeing you getting into it and making it yourself. Like I was like, this is tight. Well, well, and in doing that, I also didn't want to put myself as the front of it. Like... My, my like, social media accounts, I take lots of pictures of myself, but, like, the brand, like, I never promote a picture of, like, myself, really. I had yeah. one where, uh, thing that I released where it was, like, a drawing of me. Yeah. But it's never, I never really want to put me on it because I don't want me to be the reason you're listening to the music. Right. I want the music to be the reason you're listening to the music. So, right. And, and with a DJ, I remember one of the early raves I went to, somebody said something to me that I thought was, like, so interestingly, stupidly profound, which was, like, Real ravers don't look at the stage. They turn around and they look at each other. Mm. And I was like, you're fucking right, man. Like, like we're here together. That's and cool. Yeah, and like, yeah, frankly, the DJs, the, the they're DJs not doing much. Isn't they're iPod, you know? Like, I, I love DJs. I of respect course, DJs. You are a DJ. I, yes. well, well, I'll stand there and watch a seven hour set yeah. alone. You know, like, I'll, yeah. I like it. But, yeah. I mean, you're not there to watch them stand there. No, you're there to feel and, and dance. And be with people. And be with people. Yeah, and be with the community people around mm-hmm. you. Like, Half of the half of the things I bring into festivals are things to hand to other people. Right. You know? And you do you do uh, fingy light shows pretty well. I, I I still I mean I can never undo it yeah. once you learn it. Yeah. But I haven't I haven't <laughs> had lights in a while. Okay. Um, for but, people who aren't in the know, yeah. um, there's a thing called a, a, a I don't gloving. Know. Gloving. Gloving. Yeah. yeah. Light shows where you do a light show for people with these little finger gloves and you make your. Uh, you make your fingers dance in a very mm. hypnotic way, especially if there's maybe some iced coffee in your system. Hey, man, I'm, I'm down to finger. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hold on. <laughs> hold on. Um, hold on. Um, Look, nothing about this statement was factually incorrect. <laughs> okay? However you uh, want to take it, you want to take it. <laughs> I'm aroused. <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember this. Uh, we were at EDC with me and a bunch of friends, and uh, we all had the gloves. And there was this guy. He like comes up to me, and it's it's such a funny like, it especially EDC is like very broy, but it's like every all these bros are like finding out about sensitivity, and it's like this weird like. <laughs> dude, oddly, I have feelings, bro. Do you yeah, have feelings? Like, God, like, you want a back rub? And you're like, <laughs> yeah, dude, that feels fucking amazing. Your strong hands feel awesome on my shoulders, you know. And it's like, <laughs> so anyways, like this guy comes up to me and he's like, hey, bro, like. It's my best friend's birthday today. Could you guys just like fuck him up really hard? And, and we're like, yes. So like seven of us or whatever it was like get around this dude and just like beetle do and we're just fingering up, you know. And, like, it was just so funny because it's like nine dudes just like all on top of each other. It's like, oh yeah. Do you like my moves? And the other guy's like, yes, I love yes, moves. I love this. Yeah. You're beautiful. <laughs> I it's love just, it's just wonderful. It really is a beautiful thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, that's that's a thing. I, man, I <laughs> I'm like, how much do yeah. I want to share? How much do I not? I know I'm probably I, oversharing. No, no, no. It's good. <laughs> I just haven't talked about some of these things. Uh, you know, yeah, we don't have to. even though they're real, but uh, that that is a. Uh, I'll say that's a really nice benefit of iced coffee. <laughs> um, mm, Red Bull. Uh, for, for definitely for guys who maybe uh, grew up with um, whatever those masculine fucking ideas and yeah. barriers are, especially amongst each other, like oh, yeah. hetero bros. Like, Man, some of the things I used to say that were so normal, like I've had to you know undo the habit of saying things like, like the F word, you know, like I'm round friends or something. Like, yeah. obviously, I, it's been years since I've ever yeah. done that, but like, it that was, was normal, normal growing up. Yeah. Like, it, it's, I, I feel like it's so weird that people, shit. yeah, and like, that's so gross. And like, I didn't notice any of that at the time. And like, now it's all I can see. But like, it's just so interesting how those little things, like the words we were using and stuff, created this like hetero kind of, weird standoffish environment among your friends and it's like I can't and then that turns into like I can't tell my friend that I'm sad yeah you know and like that's it's like it starts with a simple thing and then it becomes a very profoundly awful thing for real you know yeah I do and that's where like literally like the rave life like 
that's why a bunch of bros telling each other they love each other and giving each other finger shows and mm -hmm. rubbing each other's backs is actually like nature is healing. <laughs> Dude, for real. Mm -hmm. Avatar the whale plotter. <laughs> 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 yeah, man. Yeah, that's how it felt. Uh, definitely the first time, I, I'll just say, the first time I took, the first few times I took Molly for what sure. Was your, what was your first rave? First rave? I never, I, I don't think I've ever gone to a rave rave. You've never been to EDC? Nope. Dude. I've just, I've just Coachella and like a lot of music festivals yeah. with the EDM like area and Burning Man, which is not a rave. Oh my God, I want to go to Burning yeah, Man. Yeah, sorry, bud. I don't know. <laughs> honestly, I don't know if I'm like emotionally prepared to handle you are. Burning Man. Oh, uh, you are. Like, I feel like I'm going to like a pr a, just arrive at something that like, not that it's a threatening thing, but yeah. like that might be a lot. And I don't even realize that I am have something that I need to arrive at. If that makes sense. Yeah, no, you'll you'll do fine. It'll be a great time. It just seems so like heavy going into the temple and stuff and you know. Nah, nah, it's so big. It's such a massive city that like, I also think like the social anxiety part of it, like you have to be an outgoing into you know, like go talk to people, go socialize. Yes, and it supports you in that. It's so big and there's so much space that like you'd be fine. Cause you can go be with people or you can just go walk in space. Like there's mm. so much area it's not like a festival where it's not like edc where you're just people 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 people, people, people. like yeah yeah it's nine miles of desert like you're just like in space that is so cool. so it's actually nice you get the best of both worlds that is really um cool. yeah that that's a whole that's a whole episode someday is uh burning man for me but yeah i could talk about it forever um <laughs> but but yeah that was one of those things like the first times I took Molly was like connecting with my bros more than like telling m my f guy friends how much I love and appreciate them. It's a life-changing experience. Well, the cool thing is, is, that, is that when you walk away from that, you realize, wait, I didn't need to take the thing. That's, that's <laughs> I can just do that. That's exactly yeah. right. That's exactly And now right. that's that's where I'm at. Like, I honestly, I haven't rolled in a long time. Same. Yeah. Same. No, no, it's been maybe Like, 10 years. that stuff is fun, and, and if you want to do it, you know, obviously be responsible. But, yeah. like, it, it, I don't need it to, for sure. to have that same experience anymore. For sure. the goal, right? Like, that's awesome. That's the goal. Yeah. yeah, no, that's the beautiful thing, is it can, sh like, it can show you something that, <clears> oh, <throat> I can be this always. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, it's been a, it's been a crazy journey with all that. I mean... We were we were like homies on Neds, and then Neds ended. Yeah, Lindsay and I like it all broke apart. Then I found new friends, right? I'm sure you did yeah. too. Um, and yeah, it, it. I guess life has a cool way of like bringing it all back around if it needs. I to. I don't really, you know? and maybe maybe other people feel differently about it, but I don't really feel a sense of. Um, hurt if I don't hear from people. Yeah. Because I figure, like, I'm, a, like, if I look at my own actions and, and how I behave, yeah. I'm so inside my head all the time yeah. that i got to assume other people are doing that, too. Yeah. And that, like, I very innocently will forget that I'm, like, you know, haven't talked to somebody in a long time. Yeah. And it's not because, like, I didn't want to see them. Yeah. Or that, you know, I don't value their friendship anymore. Like, it's none of that. It's that I just am dealing with whatever I'm dealing with. Yeah. So I, I started to really realize that, like, I'm just one of many, you know? Like, yeah. we're all doing the same kind of replicated thing. <clears throat> so, like, we we didn't talk for a long time. It never, yeah. never like, bothered me. Yeah. Um, and I hope that other people don't see things that way, because I definitely talk to some people who will take that in, yeah. like, the wrong way, where it's like... Oh, I haven't talked to him forever. Yeah, or like, oh, you don't like them anymore, or, like, you yeah. know we can't start talking again because it's been so long. It's like, that's weird. Like, yeah. Yeah. Nah, life, life's big, man. And I feel like all, guys are better at that than girls. We're way better at just being like, oh, I don't know. I didn't see him for five years. <laughs> <laughs> Is he alive? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. I hope he's all right. Huh? Yeah. What's up, bro? <laughs> yeah. Here's a picture of a, something weird I saw. Yeah. Like most of my friends, I basically just talk to on Xbox or PlayStation. Yeah. And, you know, that's kind Send of memes the, back and forth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like that's what we'll do, right? Yeah. <laughs> It'll just be see like funny some meme? stupid thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Did you see this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, a lot of people, a lot of people in the comments ask about like making friends as adults, and I, I, I never really know how to answer. It's it. funny. I, I always maybe because I'm a shy individual, but yeah. I definitely feel like I'm good at 
making a, a short term friend. Yeah. But a long term friend I'm bad at. Mm. If that makes sense. Like, mm. like, just let's go hang somewhere. I'd be. I'll be like, well, I could play video games, or I could work on my music, or like. Yeah. I like, I, especially when you've got like multiple things you're trying to do creatively. Yes. They take so much time. Yep. Because you literally need to have all the bad ideas barf out of you. For sure. Or you can get a good idea. So, like, that takes time. For sure. So, it's like, oh, well, you finish working? Well, you can start working your other job, which is the creative job. Yeah. You know? And then you don't have a social life. Or yeah. you, it'd be a lot easier if we just hopped online and then be driving over there. It's L.A. It's hard to park. But then that creates this difficulty of, like, how do you make a new friend? Like, uh, this really cool guy I met at work, and he wanted to hang. And I was busy, so like I didn't, I wasn't able to. But I was just thinking about it. I was like, "How are we gonna like start hanging? Like, this is a new friend. What am I gonna do? Yeah. Like, I've, making new friends. I'm 35. Like, that's a foreign thing to me. Yeah. All my friends are my old friends. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. it's interesting. Yeah. You. I mean, you do have to, uh, like, you do have to maybe go out of your way to see each other. Like, yeah. if you want to make a new friend, you have to see each other. Yeah. But. That is kind of, the juice is always worth the squeeze, right? Like, yeah. The effort is usually yeah. worth whatever you're getting out of it. And you'll know pretty quickly if it's not. And then, that, that you, then you don't want to be friends with that person. Yeah. If you're like, oh. But there's nothing worse than like hanging out with somebody that you realize you don't want to hang out with. <laughs> Man, that sucks. Yeah. Or being on a date, you realize like halfway through, you're like, oh, no. God, I remember, I, nope. I feel so bad because I, I hate hurting people. Like I, that's like the ick so hard for me. Like I yeah. just hate being awful to people in any minor sense. Yeah. I was on a date with this girl and I wasn't being mean to her, but I was just realizing on the date that like, I just, I don't like this. <laughs> and like, I'm like in the beginning of like a 30 minute drive to the place we're going to for the date. As I'm realizing this, I'm like, Oh no, <laughs> 30 minutes. And then we're going to spend you know three hours out. And like, Oh, no. <laughs> just like, but I just, it was hitting me but, so hard. Like, oh, geez. But did you just go on the date and just, yeah, of course, just, you know, just, just smile through it? Yeah. Because oh, I, I would much rather die inside than hurt somebody else. Oh, oh man. Much rather. That's the people's pleasers yeah. anthem, man. Oh, dude, that's me. Oh. That's me to a T. You got to get through it, bro. <laughs> you got to hurt people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not good at, at being a person who like stands up for themselves. Okay. Um, I guess that can kind of tie into the shy yeah. stuff. My wife is. She's amazing. She's such a strong person. Yeah. And, like I admire her so much for that. Nice. It's awesome. How'd you guys meet? <laughs> she approached me. <laughs> 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 I, had, I, had, I had gone to a Clippers game, and uh, it was when the Clippers were good. <sighs> Boo! I know. Lickers, Lob City. Lob City. You, Represent Lob City. <laughs> I miss DJ and Blake. Oh. Um, but uh, yeah, so we had won a playoff game against the Jazz, and I was freaking jazzed up. And like, <laughs> thank you. And uh, a buddy of mine was having like a last night out before his wedding thing at a bar. And he's like, everybody just, everybody's invited, come to this bar. And it was like some thing nearby. And I was. Very shy, but I was so hyped up from the game that I was like, I'm going to go alone to this freaking thing. Like, here I am, big boy pants time. Ooh, I'm going to go to the Pinkston. bar by myself. Ooh. Yeah, no friend with me, you know. <laughs> so I go there, and I'm wearing the Clippers jersey, and I walk in, and it's like shoulder to shoulder packed. Like, it's this tiny dive bar, yeah. and you can't move. And I'm like squeezing through looking for my friends. And immediately I'm like, I hate this. Like, I don't know anybody. Oh <laughs> my made God. A huge mistake. Yeah, yeah. And then I hear somebody behind me is like, Clippers suck. <laughs> <laughs> and it's her. Yeah. And, she, and I was like, well, the Lakers season's looking pretty shitty. This is like, it was like Kobe's yep. final season yep. or right they, before that. Yeah, they like, were, they were just tanking. Yeah. So I, I like totally owned her with the facts and yeah, turned into our adversarial <laughs> relationship. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you've been together a long time. Is it ten years. Ten years. Jesus. Next month. Ten years. In like, Jesus. Yeah, in like twenty days. Oh yeah. my God. Yeah. Um, wow. So it started with just some some shit talk. Hell yeah. And it stayed with shit talk. Hell yeah. I don't really <laughs> agree with the idea that your partner should be like you too much. Like I think for to a degree, obviously sure. compatibility. But like I think having like different ideas is what makes it so fun. Amazing. Like, I love thinking about things in a way I didn't think about them before. Yeah. I love, like, realizing that I can have a better version of the idea or, like, or like my idea is bad. Mm. Like, that's a great feeling to have. Yeah. I love that feeling. Yeah. That's a weird thing to say, right? But like, no, it's, no, it's, it's kind not. of a, it, it's so liberating to do that. Yeah. 
to be like, you know, I think I know what's going on. Yeah. And then I'm like, you know what? I don't have to stay thinking that if it gets challenged and it's clearly falling apart. Right. Like, I can think the new thing. Right. I can, you know, adopt that or agree with somebody else or realize that, like, you know what? You were right and I am wrong. And I'm telling you that. Yeah. Like, and, and dude, <laughs> I'm always wrong. <laughs> 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 She's so right all the time. Like, she, she just sees the truth in life. And, like, it's so awesome. When did you know you wanted to marry her? Um, we actually kind of agreed that we didn't want to get married. And then, because we both kind of have our feelings about the concept entirely. Yeah. Um, I've always been very anti-marriage because I feel like, why are you inviting the government into your love life? Sure. Like, it's stupid. Like, who cares? Do what you want. Enjoy yourself. If you want to be with somebody for 40 years and then decide you don't want to be, and you both feel that way, split. Yeah. Why do you need to, like, get lawyers involved? Like, I hate lawyers. <laughs> Everybody hates lawyers. Why do we want to invite them into our life like this? You know? What um, changed? It was, honestly, legal stuff. It was, you know, I can go visit you in a hospital if, you're, if you have a car accident. And, you know, that's serious. Like, yeah. So, I mean, if that didn't exist, we wouldn't have gotten married. Um, wow. That being said, that's her name tattooed on me. You know, mm -hmm. like, I'm in. I yeah. love her. And, like, even if we were to somehow grow apart in the future, like, I would be okay if she fell out of love with me. Yeah. Because I love her. And I think that she feels the same way about me. Mm. And that's really cool. And I feel thing. like that's mature as fuck. Like, not yeah. to toot my own horn, but, like, people should aspire to more things like that. Yeah. Rather than say, like, I, God, I'm, like, so YouTubed out. Like, I watch so much YouTube and, like, all these alpha male idiots who say all this stupid stuff about women should and women should. Like, bro, you are so far off the mark. Like, yeah. Let the person be the person. They ch are choosing to be with you, which is such a treat. And, like, that's hard to get. You know, if somebody wants to hang out with you, like, they could hang out with fucking anybody. Yeah. You know, so, like, that in itself is, like, mm. just such gold. Mm. I don't know. I, I, I feel like uh, we've always had that kind of relationship with each other where it's, like, we're individuals that align. I love that. Yeah. I love that. I've, where I've gone wrong in relationships always was uh, not being individuals who align, <laughs> was being merged entities and identities. I remember when you and Lindsay were dating on the show, it was, you were like, you basically became one thing. Yep. Yeah. That's how so many of my relationships went. I mm. finally learned through the pain of the deepest one, thank God. Yeah. Uh, not to do that anymore. And now that's more of what I'm interested in is like, no, no, I'm an individual like moving through my life. I'd love to find someone like I'd love for us to hold each other's individuality before we ever think of like merging it. Um, yeah. Because over time it'll happen. You know, you'll have. I mean, even now, like I'm things. married and we live together and like we're still very independent. Like we're not really. I mean, we obviously are one entity in that yeah. regard, but like. We aren't like some sort of like, I can't do things if, if you're not around or something. Yeah, like. I think that's great. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen you like go, like sometimes you're at the, the raves I've seen and like she's not with you. I mean, yeah. sometimes you guys all go, but sometimes like. She's straight up like, I don't want to go. Right. And, <laughs> and you're like, like, I do. Okay, cool. Yeah. I think that's beautiful, man. It, it rules. It's too it, easy to it fucking get rules. code of <laughs> Yeah. yeah fuck well, it's yeah. funny Congrats. because like if you can find a person who wants to be with you, yeah. you don't really need marriage to yeah. hold you there. Like, this like thing that you hold over somebody's head, like, well, you're locked in with this, you know. <laughs> Stop trying to live your own life, you know. Oh I mean, God. that's kind of what it is, right? Oh like, it's like well, you. It you're mine on you paper can't. now. Well, just like, why can't you think things? Like, yeah. you know, why am I threatening the, your ability to think? Like, I don't want to be here. Yeah. You know, like that's stupid. yeah. Choose it. Yeah. Wow. We've said a lot. <laughs> no, I love it. I yeah. didn't. I didn't think I was gonna get. Uh, beautiful relationship insight from you. I feel like every conversation, I mean, maybe this is my like mild ADD that I don't realize I have, but like it's just everything. Goes yeah, like this. no, no, no. This is how this show goes. No, no, no. This okay, is cool. this is right cool. for this pod. We cool. we dance all over the place. I love it. But that, I mean, that is life. Like that is the hard part of like, you know, people do want like an adult survival guide for me, right? Like, it, but it is hard to give like these little prescriptions for life because life yeah. isn't in these little boxes. Life is this kind of mm -hmm. flowing dance of ideas and things we're trying to balance and work yeah. through from our past and create in our future. 
it's not as straightforward as it gets sold to us as. You Did know? you ever think about Ned's uh, tips in the show being Ned's tips and not the tips? Like, these are the rules of life, but more like this is the character Ned's perspective on life? Yeah, well, it felt like an amalgamation of like Scott Fellows <laughs> and the writers. Like, yeah. I'm like, I'm like, oh, the, y yes. Like, it felt like these aren't the rules of life. This is how to try and solve problems. Yeah, because a lot of episodes, Ned wasn't giving tips like, here's this for sure. It's someone coming to him with a problem and them kind of troubleshooting different ways mm. to solve it. You know, like. Yeah. Try this, and then it kind of fails, and try this, and then it kind of fails, and we adjust, like, and that's life. Mm. That's life. Like, oh, fuck, here's the problem. Let's try and confront it, ask for ways to solve it. You kind of have to do it with yourself, not with... You need to consult the Ned Bigby inside. Whoa. Damn, dude. You like that? That's a big B right there. You like that, dude? That's you have it. to consult the Ned Bigby inside your heart. Okay, that was too much. The guru is not outside of you. Uh, the guru is uh, within. You're starting to lose me. Oh, fuck. Okay. Oh, the auth authenticity went out the Shit. window. Yeah, uh, it's over. <laughs> <laughs> but really, though, yeah. you got to consult, like, you got to consult your own ability to, like, adjust to a problem, confront mm. it, acknowledge that it's real, and then try some shit. Yeah. It's not going to go perfect, and then adjust from there, and just kind of evolve your ability to like strategize and move through things you know that i feel like, like the Ned. most the most alpha thing is like mastery right is like okay. the concept of mastery and like mastering yourself is the hardest thing like i can yeah. master lifting a weight but like mastering my mental state yeah. is like far di more difficult yeah and sometimes that can be like my ability to be educated like just learning about a new thing right like i can master that like I can master my ability to be patient with reading the page and finding out the little bit of information that was going to enlighten me, right? If yeah. I gloss over something, article, right? Like, maybe I should read the article. Like, is it hard for me to do that? And, yes. And if it is, then, you know, challenging that and mastering that is, is so, I don't know. It's yeah. hard. It's hard, man. But that's, but that's the good shit. That's the good shit. That's the good shit that comes with time, too. That's mm -hmm. the good shit I found, like, through my... <laughs> my like getting into my 30s um is how do you feel that now that you're well yeah, rob yeah, dude. now that i'm 32 i feel good okay 30 turning 30 during the pandemic you know bo burnham sang about it <laughs> uh, yeah man it was like that like bo burnham's inside that was turning 30 like it was a mental yeah. breakdown of everything internal and external because like so society was like collapsing around us what a fucking crazy time that was it, really insane. I watched a really interesting video essay as talk about the concept of like nostalgizing the pandemic and that like people kind of feel this longing to be back inside again. Oof. But like I, there, I think there is an, an endearment to it. Yeah. Obviously there was a horrible thing happening, yeah. but like what came what a side thing of that was that like people remembered about like humanity again. For sure. Like, I I'm here with people and like I'm helping people or like it forced all of us yeah. to slow down and actually pay attention to shit within <clears throat> ourselves too yeah. for sure or or the people around us right yeah. like like I feel like I fell more in love with my wife during that time oh. because it was it was just so we we're so on top of everything Dude, that's the, beautiful because oh. I had friends who got divorced during the pandemic so yeah, that's true, that yeah. was the fucking other option yeah, yeah. was like oh maybe I hate this person <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah but that's also wonderful right yeah. like what a what would have been more of a shame is to find that out 30 years later. Exactly. You know? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I lived with Theo during the pandemic. Did you? Yeah. We, we had, like, reconnected. So Theo Olivares is an actor from Ned's who Rob knows. Um, He's awesome. <laughs> yeah, such a talented, funny. I, I mean, I love yeah. that man. But we, after Ned's, we were not friends for, like, 10 years. Kind of mm -hmm. like our moms were. Yeah, yeah. Your, your mom yep. included. Like, all yep. our moms stayed close. Yeah. But we as teenage kids, boy, like, we just went on these different paths. And I ran into Theo when I was 27. And, like, we, you know, we would see each other over the years, but not, like, hang, hang. We, like, really connected at, like, 27. Stayed up really late, like, talking about life and kind of where we were at and what we had arrived at uh, kind of mentally. And I was like, oh, shit. Like, here we are, dude, yeah. after all this time, like 10, 12 years of Look not being friends. Look, Look at, at us. us. Look at Who would have thought? Who would have thought? Um, 
And yeah, eventually that led to us like living together for three years and the pandemic hit. And it was like me and Theo through the fucking pandemic, man. Yeah. And uh, much like your wife, um, I knew I loved him and I, yeah. and I needed him during Hell that yeah. time. You know, it was beautiful. That's awesome. It could have gone south, but instead it was just us broing out for a year. But yeah, I think it's interesting to think about like that, that like weird, like it's crazy to think that like something happened to the entire planet all at the same time. And then that thing is not just like something I read in a book. It like happened to us. I know. That's I know. so just mind blowing. I know. And it's so r- rare. I mean, yeah, it's very rare for something to happen to everyone. Yeah, because, like, something will happen regionally. Yeah. But, like, for everybody to be dealing with it all at the same time, like... Yeah. I was... So, I work in uh, video production and, and specifically, like, live broadcasting yeah. these days. And so, I was working on a uh, one of the daytime talk shows that was still going during the pandemic. Mm-hmm. So, for, like, the... It was, like, a month into the, the lockdown, I started working again. And I was, like, driving on the freeway, like, across, like, to Glendale in, like, 10 minutes. I know, dude. <laughs> it was so sick. I know. <laughs> Uh, okay, I found this during the pandemic. I found people who were like working hmm. during it kind of kept some of the yeah. the pandemic mental breakdown at bay because you had some structure of work. Hmm. And then those of us who like just got dropped into nothing but time and doom scrolling hmm. like entered this other fucking vortex of like I have no structure. I have what is life and what is this country and what am I and what is health? Like, I I definitely saw that. My friends who were like working, like I think my mom was working through it and she was just kind of like, I'm I'm, I'm like, yeah, 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 that. You good? Like I'm having this like existential breakdown, climbing the wall. She's like, I'm doing work. Like what the fuck? (laughs) You know, as we are doing something that will be on a social app, but I will say this. Right after, maybe a week after we did the pod, uh, I deleted Instagram off my phone. And it's been really nice. I never even thought about looking at my phone, to be honest, to, like, check it again. Yeah. It just kind of easily fell by the wayside. So, like, I'm definitely going to install it again because I want to, you know, talk to people. I like, sure. I, I love talking to fans. Yeah. Like, people message me all the time and I yeah. talk to them. Um, but, like, it was really nice to take a break. That It and, is nice. And, and the doom scrolling, you kind of hit a nerve there because I definitely will guilty of that today i was reading about the supreme court and it was yeah. like oh, the first thing i did like 30 seconds into waking up was like oh, right supreme court oh my God. right Arr. right yeah, yeah. No, no no sometimes i think it is really good to um just bring your life to your life mm-hmm. like maybe you don't need to see everything everyone in the world is doing every day all day right when you wake up right when you go to sleep maybe i was getting s- jealous man yeah i was getting real jealous yeah, yeah. i had to, I, I had to like purposefully not look at things to not allow that thing to be fed. Ah, yeah. It's tricky. It is. It's tricky with that. You can connect with so many people, but you can also see all the people who maybe have things you <laughs> but think But then you, you can want. also connect with so many people. <laughs> <laughs> so many So you're off people. socials right now? For the immediate moment, like cool. as of recording this. But honestly, cool. I plan on, on just checking in again every yeah. now and then. Did you get any good feedback after the next pod? I did. Yeah, people are really into it. I kind of wanted to avoid it because I don't like watching things I'm in. Yeah. Um, I never did I when that. I was an act- actor, yeah. and and that was kind of falling. And then maybe the shyness thing, right? It's yeah. It's like the same stuff. No, nah, people loved you. The comments are great. Well, that's good. Yeah, people want you back, and, and we loved it. I, mean, I love it was, to be back. It's it, fun. Dude, it was so it I can so yammer great. on all the time. Like, yeah. this is so easy. Yeah. <laughs> so can the three. So can Lindsay Daniel and I. Yeah. Like, it's just too much fun, man. <laughs> um, well, beautiful, man. Yeah. Uh, we covered a lot of ground, but we'll cover more another time. We've really solved all the world's problems today, here, now. All you need to do is listen to this, and every one of your problems hey, is man. solved. We did it. We did it. We did it. Problem solved. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, literally during the pandemic, that was a joke Theo and I had like yeah. every night because, you know, we'd sit there, yammer on for hours yeah. about the world's problems, <laughs> and then like. <laughs> There's nothing to do. You solved nothing. We need to go to bed. So then, then you we sanitize just, your hands. Yeah, then we just look at each other and be like, well, we did it, dude. All right, guys. We cured COVID. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> we solved America, bud. <laughs> On well, to chapter two. Yeah. A pleasure to solve America with you. Likewise, bud. And, and the world's problems. Um, yeah. Before we go, hmm. uh, let me ask. I, I like to leave the, the audience with uh, a little tippy tip. Oh, okay. Um, You've already kind of provided some great nuggets. Um, 
But I, I guess around shyness seems like the most appropriate okay. one. I know there's a lot of people who really struggle with that. And, and then it becomes a spiral, right? Like, yeah. oh, I'm shy. So then you, your behavior changes. You're like, ah, I'm not going to go out. I'm not going to do those things. I'm not going to put myself out there, which then kind of reinforces mm -hmm. that you're shy. But it's also preventing you from doing the thing that would kind of open that up yeah. a little bit. Um, and I really feel for people who are going through that. So, yeah, as someone who struggles with shyness, um, what advice do you have for people? So I, I do a lot of reading about, like, self-betterment and things like that. And, like, a lot of that leads to, like, Eastern philosophy and stuff. And yin and yang is such a wonderful concept. The Kay. idea that, like, two things are separately together. Kay. And I feel like internally we have kind of two beings that coexist. <laughs> Inside of you there are two wolves. Um, <laughs> One is that your emotions are things that happen to you. Like, emotions can just bubble up out of nowhere, surprise you. Like, I can feel rage out of something, or I can feel fear or, or excitement or giggle or whatever. That's something that happens to you. But your intellect is kind of how you process and then attack things. And so I feel like my shyness is my emotional thing. It's something that happens to me. But I can intellectually reflect on how I'm feeling and then decide whether I want to placate that or not. So I feel like, for me, really understanding that like I have an opportunity to always decide. Um, and that can mean that like I can still feel scared and step off the cliff, mm. you know? And know that like my fear is a thing that's happening to me, but I know more than the fear does, mm. if that makes sense. Like mm -hmm. I can read about somebody else's experience and they can tell me what happens when I jump off the cliff. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't need to be, like fear isn't telling me all the answers. Fear is just telling me fear. I can decide that like, you know what, I'm gonna go against my own feeling. So there's been a lot of times where like, I will, like even today, right? I was like a little shaky, nervous yeah. uh, at the start of this. And like, it's one of those things where you just gotta tell yourself like, I'm shaking, but like, I didn't decide to start shaking. Right. I, I'm, that's coming up out of me. That's, a, that's my emotions happening. Right. I am deciding to not let that be the thing that takes the, the reins, you know? Right, not let so. that steer. Yeah. I love it, man. I think that's, I think that's helpful. And yeah, yeah, we don't get to choose when those nerves show up. No, no, you never do. And yeah. you have to realize that that's always going to be the case. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm nervous for still like every audition, any performance, yeah. any things like that. I was definitely nervous when I started doing the pods. Now it feels like normal, but mm -hmm. that's it. You get through it. You get more comfortable jumping into the cold water, you know. Yeah, man. Um, cool. Well, it's great to see you. Well, you got any new music uh, dropping? Uh, we might have some stuff in the future. I th we've been talking about doing yeah. some stuff, and I'm really into that. We should cool. definitely have like an in-person sesh. Yeah, exactly. Um, Just get together really and, and yeah. fuck with some shit. And then I have some new music coming that I'd love you to remix one of the songs. I would absolutely love that. That'd be so cool. fun. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I ended up. Uh, yeah, I ended up kind of accidentally making a house song. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, I can't wait to show it to you. Dope. Yeah, it's like it's like the whole project is in house, but there's like this house track on it. Sometimes when somebody doesn't make that kind of thing, yeah. and then they step into that, they yeah. see it from a new perspective yeah. that absolutely shakes it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm stoked. So we'll, we'll connect on that. Uh, oh, yeah, dude. Rob's not on social media, but no, uh, I am on sometimes social media. he is. Don't follow say that. Him. I am on social <laughs> follow media. Follow him at Pinky Pinkston? Uh, Pinky Pinkston on most of the things. Uh, it's hard to get Pinky or anything that doesn't sound stupid. So, <laughs> so I'm sticking with Pinky Pinkston. I like Pinky Pinkston. I don't, but I keep it... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Go follow Rob. Uh, tell him how much you love him. Oh, I love you guys. Okay. Bye. Bye. Cool. Cool. Sweet.